Well done. How does this one compare to the other 17, considering the layoff and you came in here a 17th seed and all of the other obstacles involved? This one is like stands alone. This one's like a loner. <laughs> I don't know. This one is so different than all the others because the first one always, always feels different because that's the one where you want to try to make your break on the tour and and then all of a sudden you're on these streaks or whatever it is and I have to put it in the category maybe of the French Open, that one that I was chasing. Um, the moment when you wait for something for a long time, it feels that much better, doesn't it? Yeah. So that, that's how it felt tonight. And plus it was against Rafa. It was after the comeback, after six months not having played. I mean, everything is, seems so perfect. And plus I was down in the fifth, end up winning it, where maybe I thought also for a second that it's probably not going to happen anymore tonight. So I, I felt like I was very lucky, but uh, worked hard for it and couldn't be happy uh, right no, now. No luck is involved. A little bit of a Maybe. fairy tale, really. Very fairy and speaking tale. of fairy tales, we've been talking about this match for the last couple of days, obviously, yep. because of the rivalry and what you guys have achieved over your careers. Did you ever sit back the last couple of days and go, oh, this is a big one? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, maybe not as much. I mean, I think what I did well is I embraced the fact that it was yeah. going to be a big match. I really thought, like, don't shy away from saying, like, it is a big match. God, like, for him, for me, for tennis, for everybody, it's okay to, for everybody to be, like, pumped up yeah. about it. And I think I embraced it well because I had the necessary distance to it because I haven't played Rafa in a long time. It's not like he's beaten me, like, in the last six months, you know, four times. Mm -hmm. So I think I went into, uh, into the match with a good mindset. Yeah, and then I was just... Um, trying to play the ball and not the opponent and uh, I just told myself I have to really really fight that's at the end of the day when I spoke to Severin and Ivan my coaches yesterday they just told me at the end it's mental it's not your game your game's there and uh, yeah so I, I think that's why I think I was able to turn it around in the fifth it's those little things that that matter Great advice. so tell me about the first four sets were kind of one break decided it. You get down a break in the fifth set. Leg is hurting a little bit. Injury mm. timeout. How did you summons the last five games on the trot? Maybe the best of your career. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I think I, I started to play more clear again. I, I told myself, if you're going to win this match, it's only by playing up on the court. Um, and I felt like, you know, he was doing the old um, body serve uh, midway through the, the fourth set and then fifth as well. And I struggled to read it, struggled to f fight it off, really. And I think once I told myself, just be offensive, take it early, take his speed, and the court's going to give you something. That's what I told myself against Stan, too. All you need is a couple of good connections. And then, of course, you need a bit of luck here and there as well. But I think that's what paid off for me at the end. I just, I think I went to get victory and it paid off. What was that Hawkeye challenge like <laughs> at the end? Yeah. Match point. Well, I was actually more nervous for concern for the, the second serve, uh, that just previous uh, Hawkeye. That one I thought it was out. Okay, I ended up anyway losing that point, yeah. and I thought, like, well, maybe if it would have been in, he would have maybe shanked it anyway. I could have <laughs> won, and, like, here I am now with Deuce, and, like, oh, my God. I'm thinking things. I'm I seeing the whole thing, like, going <laughs> bad now. And then the last one, honestly, I thought it was a 90% chance that I was going to be in. Okay. Yeah, and the good thing was that he didn't go for it. He didn't yeah. touch it, so if it was in, it was over. Yep. And I was just... Just uh, really, really hoping that this one's going to be in for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Your on-court speech, of course, was wonderful. And, and you Thank said you. something that uh, I think struck a lot of us when you said, if I could have a draw with Rafa, I would take it tonight. Right. And there seemed to be a sense around the entire weekend, especially with the Williams sisters playing yesterday. Of course, it's a major competition, but it also felt like a celebration. Yeah. Did you feel that way? Yeah, I think, I mean, it did feel great to share in the court with Rafa and, you know, go back a long way with him and uh, I've seen him grow and become the legend he is today so I I as much as he's hurt me and hurt my career sometimes I still always respected and enjoyed the matchups with him you know it's not been easy and he I think he made me a tougher and better player over the years so without him I wouldn't maybe be here tonight without the crowd I wouldn't be here tonight so yes it is at the end of the day I think final day of like the Super Bowl I mean those are a celebration of the game as well in some sort that's why it was so nice to see again 
and Rod Laver back on the court for us <laughs> tennis players. It's a huge deal playing in his building and him being there and giving the trophy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's super special, no doubt about it. Also, talking about it being a celebration, I know you're on the court and you're focused on that last challenge and yep. it's match point, mm -hmm. but did you get a chance to see your players' box and the reaction and what it meant to the people in your players' box? I, I yeah. think we can run it and Sure, I mean, I here. think that's what made me also go so emotional at the end, you know, because here you're like, oh, it's real, it's happening. If they're celebrating, they're not wrong. They saw it as like, <laughs> I, I saw it too. It's on the line, look, it is on the line. There's no turning back from here. Yeah, look at Luby there. Yeah, no, we worked so hard, honestly, the last six months. I know everybody says that, yeah. but we really did. And Severin, he told me, you can win the Australian Open. And yeah. we joke about it now, but uh, I mean, I guess he was right. It was, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful moment in my career. These last seven, eight months have been sure tremendous because the worst I ever felt was on the grass court season yeah. because I knew my knee wasn't well. And that's where I got super frustrated just shortly before Wimbledon because I knew I will not be at 100% for, for me, the biggest tournament. And then when the tournament was over and I just realized that knee was not going to get better right now and I was going to miss the Olympics, US Open, everything was gone. I mean, I was I was sad, you know. Of course, I was. So to be here right now, it's just it's crazy. Enjoy the moment, Frank. Yeah, yeah, you well earned done. it, man. Yep. I appreciate it. Thank you. Very well much. done. Congratulations, I'll see you number soon. eighteen for Thank Roger you. Federer. I'll see you and soon. And counting. I like hearing that. Exactly. And, and, counting. Counting. and counting. And counting. Yeah. Well, yes. I guess so. <laughs> and counting. Everybody's counting on that. On the All court, right. you said, "I hope to see you next yes, year." Yes. Because you never know. I'm not getting any younger, and the body is fragile right now, especially tonight. <laughs> Beers on you, buddy. But uh, it's going to be a big party, so I have a long night ahead of me. Yeah. We'll get on with it. Congratulations right. again. Care. Thank you.